I have water, watercolors, pen and inks. And started to Mixture. acquire equipment and and you know yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. so this is this is really well, where it all started then I guess sort of May Probably, yeah. May June sixty yeah, eight and so um, and yeah. what kind of uh, works was it was was it it was completely uh, oh, mainly, figurative I suppose. mainly scenes yeah they were beach scenes uh, realistic not didn't get into abstracts then but uh, mostly mostly yeah local local scenery. Yeah, all the uh, stuff that the tourists would go for, you know. Right. Yeah, they they love, you know, there's certain, uh, you know, scenes that are so yeah, boat popular. Scenes, you know. And the boat scenes, yeah. yeah. That's so it was, it was pretty, and it was, there was, it was obviously a commercial edge to what you're doing. You weren't, you weren't a sort of uh, tortured artist, you know, expressing oh, yourself no, I, I through, was, you know. I was painting to sell. I wasn't, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't like. I'm going to keep this one because it's so good. <laughs> yeah. I wanted well, to sell everything. He never, never. There's well, maybe because I'm, you know, I look at certain pieces that are so uh, original, so different, something uh, that he's never done, and then oh, we got to keep this one. But Paul has never ever said that. It's not one painting. Well, my attitude is the next painting is going to be the best one. Why keep an old well, one? Well, they're all great. Yeah. yeah, that's right. No, but a lot, a lot of artists are like that. A lot of artists can't watch their last film. A lot of musicians can't listen to their oh, last yeah. album. And I think that's a, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's, that's a sign true. of a lot of artists, isn't it? They're, they're done with what they've done yeah, before. Yeah. That's old news. Yeah, because they might Move go on. backwards. That's right. The next step at some point was Germany. How did, how did that right, end George. up happening? How did George that happen? Exactly. So who are Crystal and George then? Shall we find out who Joy they are? Tell you. Yeah. She's going to tell you. Go on. Let's <laughs> hear about funny. them. <laughs> no, they were just uh, in the same uh, town as us, right? George, uh, like I think I mentioned later, he's he was studying language. Um, uh, he might have been working for a travel agent there. He spoke five languages. He was... Uh, his girlfriend, Crystal, was from Lunen, Germany, and so he was also studying uh, German and wanted to prove his German. So his plan was next to go to Germany and to go to school there. And uh, Crystal was a hairdresser, and she she was there. And, uh, well, we started to go out with them as well. And uh, She just, liked your hair. That's how she met. She said she liked your hair. Oh, you did the... And I used to dye Joanne's hair. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I started, I started dyeing uh, her because she couldn't get uh, what she wanted was a street look. Oh, that was later. And then. I beat yeah. Fidel Sassoon with that. Oh, that's right, later. <laughs> no, that was extraordinary. You know, he, I did it before Fidel Sassoon. He'd probably Fidel be a Sassoon. multi uh, billionaire, I guess. But <laughs> miss my calling, Joanne. I guess that's it. would have been a damn hairdresser. No, I, I had my <laughs> hair. My hair was dyed white blonde, right? Right. Platinum so, blonde. Okay, that was that. Plat mm. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. platinum blonde. And then the thing was, uh, well, when we got back to London later, but I, I just wanted to go back to natural. So I actually went to Vidal Sassoon and I said, look, can't you just put, you know, sort of, a, uh, my hair was like a light brown, I guess, you know, like a dark blonde. And so, you know, can you figure out something? And they said, uh, oh, well, we have to dye it. And then we could do streaks because streaks had just started at that time. And it was Paul's genius, really. It was really quite something. Uh, he just came up with the foil idea yeah. where, what, you take just a few take strands. Take a few strands and wrap it in foil and just do it the same all over your head. So you end up with streaks. Like without, <laughs> without going having back to, go to all a colour. First. Yeah, with all your hair falling out. <laughs> so, so anyway, any, George any, and Crystal, any, Joanne, and yeah. Germany. Carry yeah. On. yeah, so George and Crystal said, Hey, why don't you come to Germany with us? And well, we're what 22, 23 then, so we don't really have any commitments and we want to see all of Europe. And yeah. so we thought that was a great idea. And we said, Okay, we'll go back to England, pick up some of our winter clothes, and then, uh, you know, again, we'll hitchhike uh, to Germany. and George and Crystal said, look, Munich's the place to get jobs. So we hitchhiked and they took the train and we met at the train station where we stayed for about three days in Munich. And uh, anyways, it wasn't so easy uh, at all. Well, they wouldn't let you get an apartment because you weren't married yeah. in those days. You couldn't get an apartment together. Wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah even even hotels then. if you weren't married. 
Some would really? take Sometimes Some we'd would... lie and say we were on our honeymoon. <laughs> yeah. Cranky. In a hotel. <laughs> well, we did that in France and they gave us the bridal suite. We got the bridal suite one night. <laughs> yeah, so in Munich then, uh, we're not having any luck with uh, apartments or jobs. I mean, it was only three days, but... Uh, anyways, uh, uh, then Crystal's, uh, she goes to go and get uh, some tea for us. And then this guy comes up and says, hey, why don't you join me? And she says, why don't you join us? My friends are over there. So this guy just happens to come from Berlin. And he joins us. And he said he was a waiter in Berlin. And he said, uh, hey, it's no good here in Munich. It's better in Berlin. He said, I'll help you guys. Why don't you uh, come to Berlin with me? And we said, well, okay, that sounds like a great idea, but uh, uh, anyways, we tried to get tickets and we couldn't, so we said, okay, uh, our tickets are tomorrow morning, and we'll see you in Berlin, and we were quite surprised he was there in Berlin, and he ends up finding us an apartment. He Finded you a job at Siemens? Finds me the job at Siemens, uh, you know, traipsing around everywhere with me, and uh, at he's Siemens. got an apartment, we yeah. At the big yeah. country, at, at the big company Siemens, a, a job there. Yeah, wow, worked that, for them yeah. for that's six a good job. Yeah, nice yeah, job. A, well, I was in the cushy factory. Cushy job, a real cushy job. Yeah, it was so cushy. That's how I started to write some a little bit of a diary. In there. I couldn't get work because of being British, the Germans wouldn't allow British to work there just because the G Brits wouldn't allow Germans to work in England. Well, so unless you went back, I'd have to go back and get a permit from England. Uh, to get a job in Germany, so I didn't bother. I just worked uh, construction illegally. Cash in was, hand, uh, yeah. Yeah, they just put you in a covered wagon and drive you to a construction site near wow. the wall because yeah. no, no Germans wanted to work in those sites. So wow. I was working with all kinds of foreigners and Jamaican guys. And, well, oh, he was in charge of the fire. Oh, he was clever, <laughs> that guy. In, the Jamaican, in. it was... <laughs> 17 below zero, working outside. Can you imagine? Ooh. And well, you so and George worked together. George and I worked together. But uh, but this guy, we went there and the, he, he, his job, this Jamaican, got the job of keeping the fire going. Can you imagine? That's a pretty cushy job as well, isn't You're it? You're not yeah. kidding. Blimey. Luckily, the beer, the beer wagon came round at nine <laughs> o'clock and so we... we we had a, a nice little beer at, at nine o'clock. Nine well, p.m. Was, instead of a tea, they don't know. Nine a.m. They don't nine have a tea break. They have, they, they have a beer break in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> at nine a.m. with sausage, I should imagine. Nine, nine a.m. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, beer and sausage. Uh, Wiener. Oh, if you had the money, you could do that. We just barely could afford a beer in those days. But <laughs> yeah, that's true. It was... How how did, um, did did Berlin have a reputation at that time uh, for sort of um, you know, uh, uh, style and, and, and music. It was it's known amazing. to some point, right? Or was it known yeah. to you guys at that point? Was it, did it have no, that reputation? No, we found out when we got there, but, I mean, it was an amazing place. I mean, the atmosphere, you, you felt like you were on an island, you know, surrounded by this wall. The wall was just put up seven years before we got there. Well, so there was yeah. still a... I had a friend that, uh, she had an apartment which ended up just in front of the wall. It was quite extraordinary that she had been in that apartment for quite a few years. And then she wakes up one morning and, the wall was and there up. was the wall. It was done overnight. It was just beyond belief, yeah. you know, and that's Absolutely. what uh, a guarded uh, concrete barrier, right? Yeah. That, that divided the East from the West. But you did feel like you were on an island, actually. I mean... Uh, the, the Berlin way of life, it was, uh, you know, just Fantastic so clubs and bars. And people lived like there was no tomorrow, you know what I mean? It was sort of, it was, it was the attitude that you never knew what was going to happen next, you know. Right. They sort of celebrated that they were on the right side of the wall. Like so I saw paintings as well. I got painting again a lot. And I used to work all day when I wasn't working on the construction I'd be doing paintings and selling them on Kufus and Dam on the main street. So I used to go there with a whole bunch of paintings under my arm. I'd put them outside of this cafe and I would sit on the inside of the window looking out. And when anybody pointed to a painting, I lifted up a sign with the price on it. <laughs> so I had that, I had that really down tick. I had it off. Really good. And I was keeping warm because I was inside a cafe having a cup of coffee or something, you know. 
And again, it was the same sort of same sort of drawings, same sort of art. All sorts of yeah, just the local land. stuff, you know, to sell. And also, I did a lot of work for our landlady. She was mad on religious things, so I was doing all these copies of religious uh, uh, faces yeah. and Water Jesus. Colors. And, oh my God! Like they weren't large, but miniatures, some of yeah. them. Yeah. Uh, and also uh, Elke, she did ordered, little yeah, little for, uh, yeah. It's amazing. We don't have any photos. No, of those. yeah. In those days, no camera, no well, camera, no photos. Yeah. You know, oh, really? That's what Not it was like, like in those days. And obviously, back in, in those days, the wall was was there around West Berlin, and but it was sort of you know yeah. an island in the middle of of um, Eastern Germany. Had it was that odd going through? Do you remember sort of going into one and coming out of the other and, you know, traveling well, through we different bits? Well, we went to East Berlin twice. We went over the body. We oh, yeah. We could go. You could. You yeah. Know. Yeah, we yeah. could go as uh, foreigners. We I mean, go. otherwise you did not see If you're a West, East Berlin, right? West Berliner, you could only go once a month. Yeah. But like our landlady... Uh, she had a boyfriend on the other side, so she couldn't see him except once a month, right? Ah. Yeah, so she was sort of up and down. But sure, you have people that... Uh, all these situations where just overnight their families are separated. Split. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. quite Amazing. something. Because it had only and, happened, uh, say, five, six years before you arrived. So it was yeah. fairly fresh yeah, to everybody yeah. as well. Yeah, so That's relationships right. yeah. had, had... Yeah, you're sure. right. Yeah, relationships had been built up just before, and then suddenly, as you say, almost overnight, just boom. destroyed, amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, I mean, we actually went to the war one New Year, New Year's Eve, wasn't it? We yeah, went to the war yeah, the with a couple of friends of ours. And we ended up we snow, throwing snowballs at the East German guards. <laughs> they quite enjoyed it. They started throwing a few back, back and everything, and then suddenly this siren goes off, and this cop car comes up mm. and wants to put us in the back of the car and drag us off. And we just explained, no, no, we're okay. And, and they, they said, no, they might shoot you. And I said, no, no, they're having fun. They're throwing snowball. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't understand why we would throw snowballs at the guards on the other side, right? You know, being a policeman, you know, he's yeah. sort of. It was a strange thing to do for him. But anyways, that was one experience we ended up having a, a laugh at. <laughs> how long were you in how long were you in Germany for, roughly, do you think? Six months or six something? Six months. Or? Yeah. Like we were six months in Berlin. Yeah, six months. And you started yeah. to get was, um, uh, yeah. yeah, and you started to get a bit more uh, a bit more um successful in selling art and, and it was you really got the feeling that you were yeah. I got something. into it more. I got into the painting. Yeah, I started getting into it more there. Yeah. Well, at that time, it was, you know, when I wrote my father saying, uh, you know, I had a plan that maybe I would open a gallery in Vancouver. Yeah. And I said, you know, go back to Vancouver for three years. And, you know, I need enough money to open up on Granville Street. We have, you know, like our best galleries are there. There's only a few. I mean, Vancouver is small, right? And so I sort of had that idea. I was telling my father that, you know, uh, everything Paul does, of course, it was very reasonable, but, you know, people not only interested, but wanted to purchase his works. And, uh, you know, then the landlady, in the, in the end, Paul stopped working uh, for the construction people, and he just worked for the landlady. Um, so really our rent and food was covered. Wow. And the good German wine. <laughs> oh, good, good German wine. Yeah, the German wine was, yeah. well, it was reasonable. The white wine. Well, at where I was working was just, yeah, it was quite unbelievable. Uh, because, you know, nine o'clock in the morning used to come the food wagon with the beer, of course. Because they look at beer as just being a beverage, right? Like, I mean, come on, you, I daren't say anything, uh, you know, in Germany. So here in this factory, all, all it was doing was, um, you know, checking these batteries. You only used to put them in to this machine, and it was like a 15-minute sort of, I don't know, whatever it was happening in the machine to test. It wasn't like I had to do it every two minutes. It was just crazy. And then after 15 minutes, either it went beep or it didn't. <laughs> and then it went into a bucket. So I had all cushy this. Cushy number. That yeah, was a cushy this number. This is so crazy. Not. And um, I got there uh, before uh, Christmas. 
but it was incredible. St. Nicholas, December 6th, straight through to the new year, 